Today's walk is fairly local to me. I've driven out to the village of Kongsbury and I'm currently walking towards Puxton, another small village, a very small village. And I'm here doing a recce for one of my group walks coming up. Also want to talk to you about a few things. One being a new initiative we need to start to help educate people who are going outside. And the other one is about my own plans for the year and what's left of it because things have changed and I'll get to it all a bit later on. I would like to talk about gates because the countryside coast says you should always leave gates as you find them but sometimes the issue is that some gates are they need to be closed basically so behind me is a large typical five bar gate between farmers fields and in my opinion that should always be left as you find it so this case is closed so I'll leave it closed when I've gone through um, if it's a smaller gate for a single person or maybe a bike or a horse then I would normally always close those. Um, an example of the weekend, I was walking up on the Mendip Hills over there and I came along a bridleway. At the end of this bridleway I met open access land and at that point the gate there was wide open. I can understand people saying that they think they're doing a safe thing by leaving it open for others. So if one person leaves the gate open, they've touched it, but no one else has to, so there's less of a contamination risk. The downside there is that they were cattle grazing, cattle and horses or ponies. Now they were nowhere to be seen on that side of the field, but they could have easily wandered down the bridleway path, reached the road, and then who knows what could happen. There were quite a lot of new walkers in the countryside this year. I think we need to kind of encourage them to be more aware of the risks of leaving gates open because it's not really that safe and helpful if there's livestock that can escape or something like that. So whenever you do come to a gate, whether it's whatever size it may be, and you see it open, I'd say stop and think to yourself, what's the risk here of the gate being left open? If it's farmland like this, big open fields and fine, leave it open as you found it. If it's a smaller gate bordering a boundary between private land and open access land, then I would think twice. This is why I never wear shorts on a walk. This gate is wide open. And I'll leave it as it is because there's no danger here of livestock escaping. It's just crops. The Ramblers and some other organisations have been trying to spread the message of do not touch gates. Nothing more, nothing less than that. I might find that not very helpful because it's impossible to open a gate without touching it or climbing a style without touching one of those. It can be quite hazardous. So the message should really be do not directly touch gates, so you use a glove or use a cloth, as I try and advise people in my group. And if you find a gate that's open, maybe think twice about it. Why is it open? What are the risks of leaving it open? Not just, oh my god, panic, panic, coronavirus, germs, infection. 
Meanwhile, on the subject of Leave No Trace, I walked about 400 meters up the road and my 10 litre dry bag is now half full. It's a very recent thing I started doing is picking up litter on my walks. Generally, the areas I frequent aren't too bad. Around the car parks they can be hit and miss, but it's mainly the quiet roads like the ones here, the quiet lanes between towns and villages. And it's always the same thing, McDonald's, Costa Coffee, and this dry bag just stays at my side, hooked onto the shoulder strap. I'm not carrying it. As for my own plans for this year, I was going to do the Cleveland Way next month but I feel like if we do it now, I'm kind of more pressured into doing it than I want to be. I want to do it still, don't get me wrong, but I think maybe we can wait till next year now. I quite fancy a break. I've been working non-stop now since early May, when I returned to work after being on furlough for seven weeks. I'm thinking about the Yorkshire Dales for September. Uh, possibly the Lake District in October. Depending on what happens. Depending on how things fare with um, the impending lockdown of West Yorkshire, as it seems. I could be going there in five or six weeks' time. Some final thoughts as I near the end of this walk. I'm postponing my walk of the Cleveland Way until probably May next year. I reckon mid to late May, I'll do it then. And I'm looking at going to the Yorkshire Dales in September, fingers crossed on the whole COVID thing up there. And I might also get away to the Lake District in October. That's not definite yet, but we'll see what happens. Um, thanks for watching the video. If you've got any thoughts on the leave gates closed idea I have, then please leave them below. I'll see you again soon with a new video. Take care in the meantime.